When I work with my clients, I very often tell them, I don't need to know your weight. I just need to know where you would like your weight to be. And during the process of them losing weight, I never really need to know their weight. I tell them to use a number of different methods for measuring their progress. Scales are so outdated and inaccurate and all over the place. And as I myself developed a very unhealthy relationship with the scale, I know the importance of ranking tools in specific order. Now, having said all that, and not just talking about weight loss, but perhaps physical fitness or mental health or overall well-being, there are so many different tools available to us now that utilize science and help give us a view of whatever progress we're try trying to make. So today I'm gonna to talk about heart rate variability. I've been monitoring mine for quite a while now, and I find it fascinating observing the patterns between what's going on in my life mentally and physically and what my heart rate variability is. So imagine having access our, or the ability to assess your body's readiness for a strenuous workout, tackling a complex problem or enduring a demanding work day. Well, your heart rate variability or HRV as I'm gonna call it now, is a tool at your disposal for just that. It's a dynamic health indicator that provides real-time insights. HRV measures the variability in the timing of your heartbeats, indicating how well your body is responding to internal demands. So a higher HRV suggests fitness, adequate rest, and efficient recovery, while a lower one may signal stress, burnout, or even illness. While comparing HRV with others might be really tempting, because we all like to compare everything all the live long day, it's a highly individual metric influenced by genetics, age, and even factors like pregnancy or menstruation. Having a low HRV compared to a friend doesn't necessarily imply poor fitness or excessive stress. So as you can see here, I'm just gonna throw up on the side, um, there are some ranges that can be used as guidelines, but again, everyone's is different and it's your own personal number that you want to watch. And I'm 48 years old and you can see how my HRV is all over the place. I can identify that when my number dipped, I was under a great deal of personal stress and I wasn't managing it well. And where my numbers are a bit higher, I've been on point with my exercise, meaning having a really good balance of intense exercise days and rest days and keeping stress managed and then balancing everything all out. It's pretty interesting to see the patterns and how your body responds to certain things happening in your life. So understanding HRV requires knowledge of the uh, autonomic nervous system or ANS and it's akin to an orchestra with the HRV as the conductor. So the ANS consists of the parasympathetic, I've talked about this in depth in my overcoming emotional eating course. So parasympathetic rest and digest and sympathetic fight or flight networks continually sending signals that dictate resource allocation in the body. A finely tuned HRV indicates a balanced interaction between these networks reflecting a prompt response to other signals. On the other side, a lower HRV suggests one system, and it's typically the sympathetic, is dominating, signifying stress, strain, or illness. So monitoring HRV can be instrumental in gauging stress levels or illness responses. Long-term low HRV indicates chronic stress, elevating the risk of heart attack and stroke. Um, properly utilized, HRV serves as a valuable bio, biofeedback metric, can't talk again, offering insights into improving sleep quality, optimizing athletic performance, and enhancing your mental well-being. So some key considerations in short form for HRV include the higher the better. A higher HRV signifies balanced nervous system branches, indicating fitness, ample rest, and effective recovery. Um, HRV is personal. So no universal ideal range exists because it varies among individuals. Even elite athletes may not exhibit consistently high HRVs due to genetic influences. Don't let it stress you out. HRV fluctuates and obsessively checking it is unnecessary. Monitoring trends over time and making simple lifestyle changes can positively impact HRV. If your HRV is lower than desired, lifestyle changes can aid ANS recovery and balance. And while genetics play a role, improvements of up to 50% in baseline HRV are feasible through targeted efforts. Some methods to enhance HRV include tending to your mental health, exposing your body to heat or cold stressors like hot yoga, saunas, or cold showers or baths, uh, building strong relationships with people, practicing deep breathing, adopting a healthy diet, maintaining consistent sleep patterns, exercising moderately, and staying hydrated. HRV serves as a valuable metric for optimizing nervous system health, and a consistent upward trend in personal scores reflects a well-maintained balance between exertion and recovery. 
If you have any questions or would like any more information about any of our health and lifestyle coaching packages, keeping in mind that we are not just about weight loss, please feel free to message us here on the page or email us at info at beamehealth.ca. Thanks for watching.